foggy uh, Sunday morning to Lakeside Community Church. And as we begin our morning of worship together, I would like to share from the scriptures. Uh, I'd like to read this from Psalm 34. And it says, glorify the Lord with me. You know, I, I teach my students about um, types of sentences. This is an imperative sentence where it's an implied you. You, you glorify the Lord with me. And it's continual, not like a one time. Continue, glorify, continue glorifying the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. You know, there's something very powerful about our being together to glorify the Lord. We can praise God on our own but something very powerful and special when we come together. And that's why we're so glad to be here at this time. Would you stand, please, everyone? Come praise and glorify our God, the Father of our Lord. In Christ he has in heavenly realms his blessings on us poor. For pure and blameless in his sight he destined us to be. And now we've been adopted through his son eternally. That's right. Amen. To the praise. To the praise of your glory, to the praise of your mercy and grace, to the praise of your glory, you are the God who saves. Come praise and glorify our God who gives his grace. In him our sins are washed away, redeemed through sacrifice. In him God has made known to us the mystery of his will, that Christ should be the head of all his purpose to to the praise, to the praise of your glory, to the praise of your mercy and grace, to the praise of your glory, you are the God who and glorify our God, for we've believed the word. And through our faith we have a seal, the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit guarantees our hope until redemption's done. Until we join in endless praise to God the three in one. To the praise. To the praise of your glory. To the praise of your mercy and grace. To the praise of your glory. You are the God who saves. To the praise. You are, you are the God who, one more time. You are the God who saves. Come praise and glorify. 
I, our God, the Father of our Lord. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. O oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me, how great thou art, how great thou art. My soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when through the world and forest glades I wander and hear the birds. My God, 
How great. That's right. Let's see. how great our God is. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art. Let's bring it out now, Lakeside. How great Thou art. Would you please be seated, everyone? bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we just come to you today. We give you the praise and the glory, Lord. We come to you with our open hearts, our open minds, Lord, so that we can hear your word. We also come to you uh, with our needs, Lord, our praises, the blessings that you give us each day. Lord, we know that you can hear each word and each sound that we make. We, you can hear what's in our heart, Lord. I thank you for that. We do pray for our family today, our family that's here or away, our community of friends. We lift up those who are going through um, health issues right now, long-term, short-term. Lord, be with them, guide them, bless them. We thank you just for all those who are willing and open to hear your word. And Lord, we continue to pray for those who are not, whose hearts may be hardened or maybe have just too much that they just don't know how to get to you where they are in line with you, Lord. We pray that you would give us the words to minister to them, to show them your love through us each and every day and moment. And we just give us just the hearts to love those who still need your need you in their life. Heavenly Father, I'm not sure what flies are for, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Lord, um, I know there's got to be a purpose, Father, because you created them just like you created us. Father, we just want to thank you right now for a fantastic service that was held here yesterday for Richard. Lord, how amazing it was. And as the pastor said, it was so bittersweet. Father, we ask that you continue to bless the family. Betty Jo, Des, Jack, bless them and be with them. Put your arms around them, Lord, that they will feel your presence with them. Father, I'm not sure if Kathy got to go home today, but. I heard that that may be possible, and Lord, just a few weeks ago, we thought she wasn't going to make it. Lord, you are a miracle worker. Father, thank you for what you have done in her life, Lord, and <laughs> we want to see her hold that baby, Father, uh, how awesome uh, that will be. Lord, just continue to be with Keith. Help him, Lord, to continue to get well for Holly. For the rest of the family, Lord, we ask that you would bless them. Lord, we miss Sharon Dibble. Mm -hmm. Father, she's been gone so long. Lord, we just pray that you would bless her, that you would be with her, 
that, Lord, she would feel not only your presence, but the presence of Lakeside alongside of her. Father, we just thank you for this day. It is not a pretty day outside, but, Lord, it's always a wonderful day when you're in our hearts. So, Father, we thank you for that. We are blessed above measure. Mm -hmm. Lord, we want to glorify you and just bless this time of music. Bless our pastor as he brings the word. May today be an awesome day because we have gathered together in the house of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. More love, more power, and more of you in my life. More love, more power, and more of you in my life. And I will worship you with all of my heart and i will worship you with all of my mind and i will worship you with all of my strength for you are my lord you praise you know friends in this in this season of thanksgiving again i'd like for us to take this opportunity as we meet as a body of christ just to express our humble thanks to god for who he is and what he has done his amazing deeds so let us do that now let's express our gratitude to god with this song here let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is Oh, he's so good. You are good, good. Sails, the 
Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me, no he won't now. You're Tell them now, Lakeside. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh. Would you let them know that? As you are now being seated, would you take some time of reflection, everyone, and let God know why he is good? Would you just let him know in the quietness of your hearts, just from this past week alone, think about who he is and what he has done in you and for you. Would you take a moment to do that? Lord, I, I pray that the, the intent of our hearts would be, would be good to you, that it would meet your satisfaction, that with the desire of our hearts of wanting to give you thanks and gratitude, it would bring you joy because what we have and what we are, everything is from you. And so we quietly and we humbly say thanks. Especially in the season of thanks where so many people are doing that, we want to make sure and be thankful to the one whom is responsible for all that we have and all that we are. God, you are good. And, and sometimes it's not, it's not easy to, to say that when we go through the storms of life, when we go through the fires when we go through the, the, the valleys. But God, we rest 
in the knowledge that you remain the same. You don't change. And therefore, even though our circumstances might, we know you are in control. It's part of the, the bigger picture in life. It gives us comfort to know that you are sovereign. You're omniscient. You're in control. And that gives us assurance. That gives us peace. And therefore, we bow before you and express our gratitude to you. God, just this week alone, thank you for how you have moved, how you have worked, and how you have reassured us of your presence, of your power, and especially of your love. You are good. Amen. Good. Thank you so much, everyone. So we do officially welcome you to Lakeside. And yes, uh, Jim, thank you for just mentioning what's on our minds. You know, we do apologize about these flies, but it's that time of year. And that uh, November, when it hits, these flies are just trying to stay alive, and they'll find any open door. And so just thank you for your patience. We have had a, uh, a good workout this morning, haven't we, Todd? And uh, a number of us, you know, trying our best. But, you know, we live in the country, and that's okay. It's just we, we, we are glad that we're here, and we'll, we'll, we'll be just fine. So let me go ahead and share a few things just in regards to the uh, ministry at Lakeside. In your bulletins, you've noticed some, some inserts. Now, it, it explains the mission and the purpose of Lakeside. And what we're all about and that the direction that we are, are headed, what we believe in. And, and from that, we believe that um, the importance of the body, the body of Christ, we need the body to work together. We cannot have just a few just uh, working and serving. We need as many as possible just to serve in the different areas. And so uh, on the other side of the page where you see Lakeside's mission and purpose. On the other side, you see the different ministries that we have at Lakeside. Our education ministry, fellowship, helps, missions, and worship, and an explanation of the different specific things that can be done within those ministries. Now, I encourage you to go ahead and take a look at that, and then just to think and especially pray over maybe how God might lead you to serve in any of those areas. And if you feel led, then there's this other insert where you may um, go ahead and fill out which area or areas that you may be interested in serving. And so it has a, 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 the, the different ministries, but also just a line for you to put your name and contact uh, information. And you may just go ahead and leave this. Um, just in the foyer area on the table, and then we'll be glad to get in touch with you and see where and how you would like to serve. And again, uh, th there is just strength and power in just the body of Christ serving and working together. And so just thank you for considering this. Thank you, uh, Terry, just for making sure that this is available for us. And uh, we just look forward to just hearing from you, how we may serve with you. Uh, also, let me make mention, uh, and Jim had also mentioned this, you know, I, I, Pam and I were away uh, yesterday um, meeting up with our daughter who uh, amazingly, and, and I don't know how this happened, she, she turned 30 years old, and I don't know how that happened, honey, since we're so young, but we uh, celebrated uh, her, her birthday, and, but I heard that uh, this service for, for Richard was just so, so wonderful, wonderful time of celebrating his life remembering uh, him and, and, and just so, so thankful for the many who came and were a part of that. And I also want to thank just those who had served. And so thank you, Lakeside, for stepping up and, and for serving and ministering in that way. That was very, very special. Uh, I, I do want to make mention that uh, we had just heard, um, I heard from Terry this morning of the the passing of Marjorie Hardin. And, and so for those of you who do not know Marjorie, so m number of years ago, uh, we had the wonderful uh, pastor and his wife, so Guy and Marjorie Hardin, who served here many years at Lakeside and had since moved on. And um, uh, Guy had gone to be with the Lord and Marjorie 
uh, their daughter Penny just overseeing her while Marjorie just went to be with the Lord as well. And so go ahead and pray over Penny and Chris and the family as they um, just go ahead and just deal with that emotionally as well. Hallelujah that she's with Jesus right now along with Guy. So uh, coming up this this week, everyone. So on Saturday, Lemoore is having their holiday stroll. It's an annual event, almost annual. Last year, COVID, you know, that's been like. But an annual event, and it's a way of welcoming in the Christmas season. And so the, um, the merchants there open up their stores. They have it lit beautifully and a stroll down the, the, the main street, and you get to uh, visit these shops, but then hear wonderful music. Well, uh, our worship team has been blessed by being asked to be a part of that again, and so we get to uh, present wonderful Christmas music from 3 to 5 o'clock. So that's on Saturday, this Saturday. It's right there in downtown Lemoore where the D Street Plaza is. If you don't know where that is, just follow your ears, and you'll hear us. And we'd love to have you just come on by, sing along with us, and just Welcome in that, that Christmas season. And again, what's, what's beautiful about this is we're not just singing some fun Christmas songs. We're singing deeply about Jesus and what that Christmas story is all about. And what a great opportunity. And so feel free to, to welcome our work. Feel free to join us in uh, having uh, that, that wonderful Lemoore holiday stroll time. Three to five o'clock this Saturday. And then the next day, Sunday, so a week from today, we get to have a Christmas decorating party. And so if you'd like to be a part of that party after the worship service, we're going to stick around and then do some decorating around the sanctuary and the church ground. So you're welcome to be a part of that if you would like. And uh, also, hopefully you notice these lovely things. And so 2022 directory is ready. And so if you did not grab yours, they are in the foyer area. And again, a humble thanks to Terry McGann to, for all the time she put in to make sure that things were update. And so uh, bless you, Terry, for putting in. Uh, again, your fingerprints are all over. You are out of control, Terry. So, so thank you so much for serving in that way. Okay, so uh, at this time, I would like for the children to be dismissed and have a good time at Children's Church. Okay, he's, he's obeying mommy very well here, honey. Yeah, he's, 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 he can't contain himself. He's trying. He wants to go and be there right away. Good morning, everybody. So this is my sword today. And hopefully um, I won't have to use it very often. Anyway, uh, Thank you for coming out here. I know the fog is a little challenging, but uh, thanks for being here. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit more emotional this morning than I typically am for a Sunday morning because of what transpired yesterday. Um, you know, I just you know I just want to thank Betty Jo and Des. You know what you guys did. And, and putting that service together was phenomenal. Um, the details that I wouldn't even have thought of, you honored Richard. Most importantly, because you honored him, you honored the Lord Jesus Christ. And I got to thinking about, you know, in, in our day and age, there are not many families who either know how to put together a service like that for a loved one or don't have the opportunity to do that. So often I, I get people, you know, will, will you officiate a service? Yeah, and they like, we don't know what to do, so they dump it all on me to figure it all out. And But with you guys, man, I just, I just had to show up, and it was awesome. Um. But you know, something too, once I got done and was able to kind of uh, think through it, I got, I got nostalgic. Um, 
watching the slideshow that Jack put together, seeing some of the old photos of, of Richard's life, I got nostalgic this way. How grateful I am for Richard's generation, for what that generation has taught me. You know, when I think about being a kid in, in, in the church setting, I was like normal kids, right? Like, oh, we got to go to church. And I'd go in obedience. But you know, when I was young, you, you always had church clothes that you wore to church. They were the best clothes you had in your closet. I can remember my mom always had a nice dress. People in church, fathers wore ties. You gave your best to church. And I remember when uh, we would go to church, didn't appreciate it when I was a kid, but I did in my early young adult years. In the foyer is when you talked. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Good seeing you, blah, blah, blah. But as soon as the sanctuary doors opened and you walked in, you didn't say anything. You walked and you sat down, and there was organ, the prelude, or piano, and it was just reverent. And, you know, I miss that. Not, not to say that we aren't, not to say that we need to change. I'm just being nostalgic about what Richard's generation, what that service reminded me yesterday of. It was done so well, so reverently so elegantly, or whatever that word is, um, but man, it was awesome, 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 and I believe it ties in to today's message. We're going to uh, wrap up chapter 3 of Ephesians, and uh, I'm going to be a little creative with this, this message this morning. But let's turn to Ephesians 3. Oh, you know, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanted to share this real quick because I forgot to yesterday in the service. When I met with Betty Jo and Dez, I had asked them, hey, is there any, any scripture or anything that Richard alluded to that maybe we could use? And, and, and Dez showed me this. This was on um, maybe a Facebook page or whatever, but, but Richard had read this and he said, man, I like this. So here's, here it is. I wonder how many will join me in saying, despite all the problems, my aches and pains, and things happening outside of my control, God has been so good to me. I'm going to hang on to this because this is so good. For me too. So let's turn to Ephesians 3. And we're focusing on the last two verses, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, According to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Sometimes, Father, there aren't words to express the gratitude and the joy that is and should be in our hearts. Thank you for this church. Thank you for its faithfulness throughout the many years that this church still exists. This church still has its doors open on Sunday morning and other times throughout the week. That this church is available to be able to host an amazing service for an amazing godly man. And that the social hall is available, Lord, that we have people who are, who are willing to help, willing to give her their time and their effort and their energy to help provide and serve food, to run sound, whatever you need. 
they were here to make that a special day. Thank you for them. And now we know, Lord God, that there are many distractions in our lives. And we know that there is an enemy out there, Lord, who likes to distract us from hearing your word and allowing your word to change our hearts. So, God, we just pray that you'll protect this hour of service. Let, let, let us, let you speak to us in a powerful way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me find my place here. So, um, everything we've been focusing on about Ephesians so far has been this this theological exaltation, okay? The first three chapters have been a a theological goldmine. If you think about what we've been focusing on, uh, there have been many nuggets of spiritual truth that is basically impossible to fully grasp. But we've tried, haven't we? We've tried in the past, I don't know how many weeks or months, tried to grasp the spiritual nuggets of truth. And Paul is full of praise by the outpouring of the truth in his heart. And so after he prays for the Ephesian church, he, he lifts up his voice to, in praise to the one who, who made this all possible. And the last two verses of this chapter are really a, a doxology. And so being a little creative, can, can someone tell me, what do you think doxology means? Praise the king? Yeah? What, what, do, you, what do you think doxology means? Thankful? Yeah, yeah. Let's dissect this a little bit. Greek words for doxology are they're cut in two. The first is doxo. The second is logos. That's what, that's what doxology means in Greek in two ways. Doxo refers to the kingly majesty which belongs to God as supreme ruler. Okay? The word logos means a collection of word, God's holy word in the New Testament. It describes the process of collecting thoughts in the mind, expressing these thoughts through words. So, so doxology, it's, it's a word of glory. It's a, simply a statement of praise in, that honors the Lord's majesty and glory. It's a word of praise that, that, that is what Paul is doing in these two verses. And I'm borrowing the first three words for our title this morning, which is unto him. And Paul's making a statement here that he is exalting the majesty of God. And in this doxology, Paul is sharing some statements about God's majesty and glory. Now, again, just being a little creative here this morning, as we start in our outline, you know, God's greatness, I'm going to show you a video a YouTube of the, the a cappella group, the original a cappella group, who, who sings what we just read in Scripture. Can we, can we play that? Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us now to him who is able to do 
immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to His power that is at work within us, to Him be glory to the church and 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 glory to the church According to His power that is at work within us, now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to His power that is at work within us, to Him be glory, to the Him be glory, to Him be glory. Isn't that awesome? I'm up here, man. I'm just like, I got chills going down through my body because of the reverence of God's greatness. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more. See, in all that we have been focusing on in Ephesians so far, Paul describes the happy condition of the church. And he reminds us that we are not an accident. That we are saved because of His intervention in our lives. And again, let me briefly just remind you of some of the things that Paul has shared with us so far that would lead him to say, how, that would lead him to say, now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more. Remember, we were chosen before the foundation of the world. If you are a Christian... If you claim Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you didn't do that. God chose you before the creation of the world, and He led you into that. You were predestined to become children of God. You were secure in, in, in your foundation in Christ. You were once dead to sin, but brought to life by his amazing grace. And you were seated with Jesus in the heavenly places. You were once aliens, but now Christ lives in your hearts. You are now fellow citizens. You are part of his family. You are his temple. You are his body. And you see, these, these are mind-blowing spiritual things that should cause us to say, oh my goodness, Lord, all I want to do is worship you. And there's a lot more. But these are enough that should cause us to overflow with praise. See, he is worthy of our love and our devotion and our praise. And he, it makes sense that the Bible commands us to praise God. Here are a few examples. Psalm 47, 1, 2. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. Psalm 113, 1 and 3, praise the Lord, praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. For from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Basically what that saying is every breath you take is meant to be praising God. Now, having told us 
about the glory of God in saving us. Paul, he, he prays for the church, and we focused on that. He prayed in verse 16 how, how, how we would be filled with God's power. And that we would know and live out the awesome love of God. And that we would experience the fullness of God. See, these three things should, should be on our hearts and our lips at all times. And wouldn't it be great if that were a reality in our lives? Do you know if that was something you, you did every day, there would, you would never say, oh, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. No. Every, every breath would be an adventure of life. See, we know we don't have the power in ourselves to accomplish these things that, that Paul is bring, has been bringing to our attention. So as part of his doxology of praise to the Lord, Paul lets us know. He lets us know, guess what? You have help. You have help to be able to praise God. And he tells us about the source of that help. He talks about the greatness of his ability. He is able. He is able. Check out this other YouTube of he is able. is more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, is more than able. He can handle You know, thank God that we have people who are using their gifts like that to be a blessing for us. He is able. He is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask, ask or imagine. See, that word able means to be capable, to be strong, to be powerful. And our God is a God who possesses all power in heaven and on earth. And I like this next verse that describes the God of creation in Colossians 1, 16, 17. It says, For by Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Man, that is awesome. So we see the greatness of his ability, and then we see the greatness of his abundance. 
See, when, when, when Paul talks about immeasurably more, King James talks about abundantly more. This means going above and beyond. That's what God does. He wants to go above and beyond in our lives. And we know, we know God is able, but yet we get in the way, don't we? We get in the way of seeing God do immeasurably more. Man, he's just like, I want to give you so much more. I'm so much more. But you get in the way. We get in the way because we don't live the way he calls us to live. And when we're walking in his power, when we're walking in his love, we tap into his awesome power. And he accomplishes the things that he desires in our lives. In other words, it's not up to us. It's not up to us to make the Christian life happen. Our duty is simply to yield to him every day. And when we do, his power transcends our weakness enables us to live for Him and accomplish great things for Him. See, every true believer, every true believer wants a close relationship with God. Everyone does. To live cleaner, to live holier, to honor, to serve Him more. And we ask for that, we pray for that, but we know we can't get it on our own. And his his power then exceeds our limits. He can move mountains in our lives. He can change our life, lift our burdens, and meet our needs. When when I just talked about moving mountains, let me share a story with you. This this took place Friday at the clinic. There was this uh, lady, elderly woman, And uh, I had seen her a number of times before, but I hadn't seen her for a while. And she comes in with her two adult kids. She's carrying with her oxygen. Oh, okay. So I visit her with her. I go, hey, how how are you doing? Well, I caught COVID two months ago. I got it really bad. And... um, Her daughter, her daughter said something so powerful to me. Well, she was talking about, yeah, I I was in a coma. But you know what? I heard them talking about me. I heard them saying my, about my, they're talking about my physical condition. I heard them say, I heard them tell my daughter, there's nothing we can do. Her liver was shutting down. Her kidneys were shutting down. She was dying. The daughter was overwhelmed. She left the hospital. She got in her car, and she prayed. She's like, Lord, I I feel like my faith is waning. Why is this happening to us? Why is my mom going to die? Lord, I don't know what to do. She heard the Lord say to her, worship me. Worship me. So she, she, she gets a CD of worship, and she's just in her car, and she's just listening to worship songs, and she's getting so into it. She said, when I got to the peak where I just could not worship anymore, she f- heard God say to her, mountain moved. All of a sudden, she had all this peace in her heart that The mountain that was in front of her was removed 15 minutes later, the nurse calls. Hey, we don't know what's going on, but your mom is doing better. Her organs are starting to function again. God brought her out of that. She was dying. And she's sitting right in front of me. And we're talking. He is able. 
Sometimes God will bring us into the deepest, darkest places and say, worship me. When you don't feel like it, but you do it anyway. Because God wants to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. We just got to be willing to go there. Well, the second main piece is about God's grace. Another statement that Paul makes about God's grace. God's grace is grounded in our salvation. And the question is, okay, what ways is God's grace grounded in in our salvation? Well, first, he extended his grace towards us. He loved us. He died for us. He gave us the gospel message. He sent his spirit to convict us, to save us when we called upon him, given us eternal life. And his grace continues to sustain us day in and day out, moment by moment. And 2 Corinthians 12, 9 speaks of this when he says, Paul says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. And you see, that's encouraging when, 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 you, when you fear what man has to say about you. When man says to me, man, you are a lousy pastor and you can't preach with the beans. I'll say, thank you. Because God's power is made perfect in my weakness. I know I'm weak. I know I'm nothing. Praise God that's the case for us all. That's what that scripture is saying. And we see how God's grace empowers us to accomplish his will in the world. And Paul tells us that the Lord is, again, he's able to do exceedingly more than we ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. See, when the Lord moves into your life, he comes with power. You see, Satan is afraid of you when you are a legit follower of Christ. He has no power over you. And you see, Paul, Paul represents all Christians. Sometimes we can get caught up and say, oh man, Paul, wow, what a, he's up there. At, at, at these, I'm not at the spiritual level that Paul's at. God says, baloney. Paul is just representing all Christians. See, what God did through him, he wants to do through us. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 5 says, My message, Paul speaking, and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. God can use anybody. God can take those people who are homeless right now and use them for his power. And God also, or or another statement that Paul's talking about is his grace enlivens us. See, according to the power that is in work in us, the power to live comes from dying in and with Jesus. So if you really want to live, if you really want to get all you can out of this one life that you have, you must die to yourself and die with Jesus. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified. With Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. One of the things I'm, I, you know, I have conversations with different people. We talk about God, spiritual stuff. It's like, man, they get to a point 
that when Jesus is the only way, it's like, man, they veer off to the right or they veer off to the left and they're like, ah. They think they are uh, impressing you with their spirituality or that they believe in God. And, and a lot of times, well, you know, I, I, I think as long as you're, is your, if you have a form of belief in a, a God, that I think God, he's okay with that. You get that a lot. But it's not true. Because the deal is, you cannot manipulate Jesus. You have to die to him. He died for you. See, this is where faith comes into play to live for Jesus. In John 14, it says, I tell you the truth. Jesus is speaking here. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. He will not even, or he will do even greater things than these. Because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, wait a minute. Jesus says, You will do even greater things than these. So is Jesus telling, when Jesus is healing the blind man or the beggar or raising people from the dead or turning water into wine or all this fish that was, when, when, is, it, are we, is this saying we can do even greater things than that? I don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. But I'll take it. Again, we just don't understand. Christ. See, this enlivens us and allows us to bear fruit for his glory. John 15, 5 says this, I am the vine, Jesus says, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Don't you want to be a green vine that's healthy and attached to the vine? Not that one that's turning brown and dies and gets cut off and burned. So the last statement Paul makes here is this. He talks about God's glory. See, Paul ends his doxology by making a grand statement about the glory of God. And we see the place of his glory. And the place of his glory is in the church. He's glorified in the church because it is made up of sinners who have been saved by grace. And because God is glorified in the church, we cannot afford to take the church for granted. And that's one of the things that I loved about Richard. Richard did not take the church for granted. When he was not feeling well, he had every reason to stay home. No. I got to get to church. I got to have communion. That honors and glorifies God in the church. See, as we live for him and, the, and honor his word, we receive glory from the church. When we, when we bring to God, we bring glory to God when we love him, when we love each other, when we worship, when we hear the word preached. And all this in the church. So we must go about the business of doing church. And everything we do in the church is about bringing glory to God. And I I am frustrated. I I, I mean frustrated with this church. I'm frustrated over the generations of time how the churches have dishonored God. How many times people, I don't want to go to church. How come? Bunch of hypocrites, man. 
Because you know what, though, what happens, though? When someone is going through a rough time and they say, you know what, man, I, I got to go to church. They don't, they don't know what's going on there. They don't really know who's there. Or they may have friends or family, but they don't know what the pastor's preaching. They don't know what songs are going to be. They just know they got to go to church. And so they go to church, and they have expectations that they don't understand. They're expecting everyone to be holy and to be good and to be loving and to pay attention to them. But as they're in the church, they're like, ah, man. They kind of treat each other like crap. Or something's missing here. And it's because we let the human part of us, the sinful part of us, get in the way of being the real church. Now, I'm going to kind of be a little funny here. I love this church. But this church is kind of quirky. I don't mean that in a negative way. There's something about this church that people say when they come here, they say, that's, that's the most friendly church I've been a part of. And I'm like, how? No. <laughs> There's something about this culture that is, that is unique. But we still have a lot of work to do. Always. See, we must go about the business of the church. Every decision, every dollar spent, every missionary we support, every job in the church should be done for his glory. See, every Christian, every member is responsible to give their best to the church. See, maybe that's when people have, are disillusioned by the church because the people of the church aren't really giving their best in the church. So how are we doing? Does it convict us or do we say, hey, you know what? It just is what it is. Sometimes I like that when people say it is what it is. There are other times I can't stand it because it's making excuses at times to say it is what it is. You know, when I stand before the Lord, you guys aren't going to be there with me, right? Right? The only one who's going to be right there is Jesus. I need to be able to go to the God and say, I gave everything I had, Lord. And I know I fall short all the time. But I got to have that, 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 that motor running inside me that keeps grinding it out to give my best. And it goes for all of us. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, So whatever, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Well, then we see the person of the glory, and that person obviously is Jesus Christ. Everything we do is to magnify his name. And if we talk about him, if we preach about him, if we sing and praise his name and our head over heels in love with him, we bring glory to God. And the last part is this, the permanence of his glory. The permanence is what the end of verse 21 says, Throughout all generations, forever and ever. 
See, God will receive glory from the church because of his son. And when the end of time comes, eternity will flow into eternity. And one day, Jesus will come for his church. That is going to happen. And he will take his bride home to heaven. And a glimpse of that amazing future of the church is seen in Revelations 4 and 5. See, it's only by the grace of God that we can grasp all that he has done for us. And we obviously will never be able to grasp it completely in this life. But one day our bodies are going to be glorified. And when that happens, we will understand. Everything will make sense. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, Now we see but only a poor reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now, I in part then, I shall fully, even as I am fully known. See, even though we can't grasp it all now, it still doesn't hurt to glorify him concerning the things that we do know. So give him the glory now because that is the business of heaven. Let me conclude with this. Uh, Johann uh, or Johann Sebastian Bach said, all music should have no other end and aim than the glory of God and the soul's refreshment. Where there is not Remembered, there is, not, there is no real music, but only a devilish hubbub, if it's not all for the glory of God. See, at the top of every composition, he wrote the letters J, J. Those initials stand for Jesus Juva, which means Jesus help me. And Bach ended every composition with the letters S. D, G, and those letters stand for soli di gratia, which means to God alone the praise. See, Bach had the glory of God at the heart of every piece he authored, and the same desire should dwell in each of our hearts. See, this moment in time is a good way as any for the church to just continue to be busy bringing glory and honor to God. And that's how Paul ends chapter 3 with that doxology. Let's pray. Father, Ephesians is a gold mine of spiritual truth. Thank you for being such a gracious compassionate God you know Lord we don't like it when people get on our grill and tell us what we're doing wrong but we're okay when you do it because you're truth and you're holy and you're perfect And you love us. And you only want the best for us. Therefore, Holy Spirit, when you convict us with your truth, it's not meant to insult us. It's not meant for us to be discouraged and to walk away with our tail tucked between our legs, so to speak. It's love. You want us to be better, to be holier, to be more like your son. It's a privilege to be on that journey, to be a part of that process. So, Lord, let let each of us, whether we're here this morning or whether we're tuning in live stream, God, that we would say, Lord, I just want to give you my best. I'm I'm, I'm tired of of living this, this, this empty life. I want more. 
and I can't get there on my own. I need your help. We need your help. You know, thank you again, Lord, for, for Richard's memorial service. You know, he, he ended well. He ran the race of life. He fought the fight, the good fight. And now he's with you. You rewarded him. May we all have that same experience. Giving our best. Doing what we can to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes. why, God, we give you the glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin. And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Stand with us, everyone. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory. Great things He... All right, let's sing about those great things. Has taught us great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth.
and give him and give him the glory oh he deserves that again and give and give him the glory great things has done. I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't even use a fly swatter once. Yeah. Amen. That's right. I mean, God protected me from the nuisance of flies. But God bless you, everyone. Thank you for being obedient. Uh, thank you for those who are on live stream tuning in. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.